In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create this lovely pendant using soda light and amber. So the, we've got amber drops in this kit and they vary in size. So they go from the larger to right through to the smaller drops. And we're going to incorporate both the larger and the smaller. And then should you want to create a chain to suspend your pendant from, you can use some of the medium size in, the, in a rosary link um, style around the neckline. Um, this particular motif that we're going to work on um, is really adaptable. So here I've used it in a pendant and then um, in these, these ones here I've used a smaller of the amber and used them in earrings to coordinate. Um, it'd be exactly the same principle I'm going to show you will work with these. So what you'll need for this project in terms of tools is some flush cutter pliers, some round nose pliers, some flat or snipe nose pliers and bell making pliers are really useful if you haven't got bell making pliers don't worry you can just use um, either variations on the length of your round nose pliers or maybe some mandrels um, that will help and um, this this is purely used just to create um, the same size sort of loops and curves for channel setting or for housing your amber pendant there so not vital, but really useful. So there's the tools we'll need. Uh, and then in terms of materials, in your kit, you'll have everything you need to create um, this pendant. So you'll need about 24 centimetres, that's about nine inches of the one millimetre um, silver wire. You'll need about half a metre of your um, 0.4 millimetre silver wire. And then you'll need your largest amber. I've used the largest on the strand. You don't have to, but I have in this particular design. So your largest amber drop and one of your smallest amber drops. You'll also need the spacer beads that come with um, the amber strand. Uh, and they are sterling silver, so they work really well in this design. And we're going to use about five of those um, to add a few little details and embellishments. Then your soda lights. So what you need to do is take off a selection and if you can see on this um, pendant here, I've ombre the colour. So it's nice to have a selection to the side of you so that you can pick from the lighter through to the darker shades to really accentuate that design. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is take our one millimetre wire. So that's that nine inch or 24 centimetre length um, of, of one mil wire. And you're going to use um, your bell making pliers just to start the curve off at the bottom um, for, to house the amber. So I'm just going to take the largest of the mandrels on here, go to the centre of the wire and then just, just tease the wire around. So we're really just using it just to sort of help us achieve that, that sort of oval, that sort of teardrop shape in the wire. Okay, so we're just sort of pulling it round and um, helping create that shape. So once you think you've nearly got that shape, you can then just offer it up to your amber. So we just pop it down to the amber and just see how, how close we are. So it's a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is just pull out the side slightly just until I'm happy that that amber sits in. Now, if it's a little bit larger, don't worry, that's fine because we do need to be able to thread our 0.4 wire in and around that framework eventually. So that's sitting there quite nicely. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to have cut my amber into position here. So the first thing I want to do is take my 0.4 wire and I'm going to fold it in half so I can find the middle. Okay, and then I'm going to just pop that over the wires, drop it to the bottom, to the bottom of that, that um, teardrop shape. And then I'm going to pinch and just wrap once around, once around to secure the wire in place. Okay, so make sure that's nice and tight just once around. Okay, then I'm going to bring both wires up through the centre and pinch them together so that they sort of are acting as one wire. I'm now going to thread from the flat end of the teardrop. Um, on the amber. I'm going to thread the wires through and pull them, pull the amber down those wires until it sits at the bottom 
of that teardrop shape that you've created. Okay, so once at that stage, I'm then going to take one, split these wires off into two. So split these two, two 0 0.4 wires off. So one one side and one the other. And I'm just going to wrap. So I'm going to come from, from the back. So I'm going to wrap around just the once, just to hold it in place. So make sure that's nice and tight and that's held nicely in place there. Bring the other one to the back as well and wrap around the other wire. Okay. So just one wrap around each, making sure that they're nice and secure. So now our amber is sat in place. Now what we want to do is create a channel to come around the edge that we can then channel set our lovely sodalite microfaceted three mils into place. So I'm going to use my bell makers here to help me get a consistent um, sort of um, channel for those sodalites to sit. Now when choosing um, which of your mandrels to use or trying to find a mandrel that will be suitable, you want one that is roughly the same um, circumference as your sodalites. Okay, so I'm going to pop my pliers onto one of the onto one of the wires and I'm going to do a combination of moving my wrist around to start that curve off and then once I've got it to sort of where I want it I'm then going to use my finger to push against the wire and push down to create that channel okay and then we'll do the same on the other side so I'm going to take my pliers onto the wire and again, use a combination of turning my wrist to get it to where I want it. And then pushing with my finger against the wire to create that channel. Okay, so here we've got this sort of, it looks a bit like this now. I'm just going to, this, this one's slightly higher than this one. So I'm just going to pop my pliers back in and just give it a little turn just to rate, just to lower that curve down a bit. And you can do this at home, take your time to make sure that they are symmetrical and sort of lined up with each other. Okay, so there's my um, my first initial outline done. So what I'm going to do now is start to channel set my soda lights along this channel. So I'm going to start with my palest colour. So um, go into your little pile of soda lights, pick out your palest colour and then... You can organize these in advance if you like. You can organize them um, into sort of graded colors and then you don't have to really think about it too much. But always remember to do two lots because there are two sides um, to channel set. Okay, so we'll pop that one into place. You can see my wire is coming across the front. Um, so my thread is, my wire has gone through this bead and then across to the front and then to secure that in place I'm just going to take the wire around just the once, push up into position, pull the wire around and around to the back. Okay, then once it's at the back we're going to thread it through the framework that is surrounding the amber. Pull that through so that the wire is sitting across the back like that. And then again, we're going to wrap that around. So I'm just going to take that wire all the way around one more time, around that framework. Pull it nice and tight. So that, that wrap is nice and neat onto the wire. And then we're ready to add in our next soda light. So I'm just going to go for the next sort of shade up, just by eye. And pop that into place. And again, wrap that in. So I'm going to repeat this on both sides and I'm going to get down to where it's straight. So you'll need about four on each side where that channel is straight. And then when it comes to start curving, I'll come back to you and talk to you about how we manage that curve. Okay, so I've got four on each side. You can see I've started to graduate the colours there. They're starting to get darker. And at this point, our channel is going to get wider because our wires... Are coming straight down whereas the rest of the frame around the amber is curving so what we want to do here is just i'm not going to try and force the shape too much i'm just going to hold it onto the bottom the wire's got a bit of a spring so i'm holding on and i'm just going to sort of rock the wire around 
so that it starts to make the shape. The rest of the shape will be made parallel by actually adding the gems because they are creating the right distance for us. So from this point, if I just add in one of my darker ones now, um, so I'm trying to keep that gradual colour change. So you can see that the width of the the width of the um, channel is determined by the size of the stone anyway. So if you find that they are start, starting to jump up or raise, then just pop your hands, your fingers over the gems whilst you do that first wrap, just to keep them in place. And if you hold on to them while you just rock the wire backwards and forwards, that will sort of cinch everything into place and help you keep a consistent channel around. So if I just do the next one on this side, and then what we'll do is I'll finish putting them on. In this, in on this um, pendant, I've used eight soda lights on each side. So we were sort of halfway there already anyway. Um, so I'll just do one more on here before I um, turn the camera off and complete the next bit. So if I put one more here and just show you that cinching in again. So let that drop down into position. Um, let the bead determine the width of the channel. So if you need to, you can manipulate the wire a little bit. Push down with your thumb and finger onto the bead so that they sit into the channel whilst you do that wrap um, and cinch it in. So you can pull it nice and tight then. Um, and that's, that's how you keep that channel nice and even. So I'm going to um, pause while I complete the rest of the beading of the channel setting and then come back to you after. Right now we've ombreed our way all the way around our central um, amber there. And if you look at the front, so all the beads are um, sort of outwards facing upwards. But if you look at the back, you've got the wires going across the back. So the back is much flatter um, and nice to sit against the skin. So um, from this point here, we're just going to finish these wires off and trim them away. So on this side, I've wrapped um, twice around and I would recommend doing at least two or three wraps to finish these the wires off so I'm just going to go another time around this one and then tuck it into the back and then what we'll do is we'll trim off the wires just sort of at the back towards the inside of the framework and then when we tuck them in with our flat nose pliers they should sit sort of between the front and the back inside the frame so there's no risk of catching the skin or anything so I'm just pinching down those little tail ends and pinching them together now at this point as well it might be nice to go around and tidy up these wraps so you might find that they're inconsistent in um, how far away they are from each other so if you just go around with your pliers and just give a pinch on each of those little wraps just to pinch them together it looks just a little bit neater uh, um, for the finished piece so I do that on both sides pinching them just pinching them together um, you might be able to do that with your fingers if you don't want to do, use your pliers to do that but um, it's probably easier to get in with your pliers okay so now we're going to work on sort of the decorative um, bottom to this and also the the part where we're going to connect the um, little dangle then on the bottom so here you can use bell making pliers all around those pliers I'm going to use brown nose pliers so they're just a little bit less clumsy for the video. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose a point on my pliers now. If you want to, you can make a little mark on them so that you know that you're consistent when you when you do this. Um, and I'm just going to go in. And what I want is these the two sort of, when I double them back, I want the two sort of edges to almost meet at the centre, sort of the centre below where the middle of my amber is. So if I just put my pliers roughly there, um, again, choosing that point on my pliers that I'm going to be consistent with. Hold on and just bring the wire back on itself around like that. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. So position your pliers and then bring the wire around and allow it. Let me put my pliers the other side, you can see. Allow it just to come sort of in front of the amber there. Okay, so once you're happy that these two are looking roughly the same. Make sure that these two ends of wire are the same length. And I think I'm going to cut a little bit off because I think my spirals might be a bit too big at this point. So I'm going to say roughly 
um, from the end of the of the um, sort of loop there then I'm going to say roughly two centimeters is going to be ample from that point okay so just trim those down and then again with your round nose pliers just go to the tip of the pliers to the tip of the wire and just spiral it in so hold on to the tip of the wire turn and turn and turn until you can't go any more any further with the with the round nose pliers and then once you can do that you hold on across the spiral with your flat nose pliers and continue to turn that spiral in and just allow it to sit sort of against the frame there do the same on the other side the tip of the pliers to the tip of the wire turn that spiral go as far as you can and um, when i say as far as you can there'll be a point you get to where you can't hold in the spiral with just holding one width of wire um, and you can't hold across two widths of wire because what happens is you you pinch your spiral together and you end up with a um, coil rather than a spiral so once you get to that point you want to swap pliers use your flat nose pliers or snipe nose pliers to hold across the, the spiral and just continue to spiral it down um, until you're happy that they're the same both sides so you can leave it there if you want to and um, you don't really need to do anything else uh, at this point I was wondering whether to hang it this way up uh, and have it as a pendant like that which of course you could because you've got connection points here and um, but I'm going to show you how I how I completed mine so um, here what we want is another length of your 0.4 wire and you're going to I've got a piece I've got a little piece here you might be able to use some of your offcuts for this so um, a little piece of your 0.4 wire and we are going to thread on a soda light. So it just depends whichever color you want to choose. Um, thread on a soda light. Like that. Thread it sort of roughly to the center. And then double the wires up. And pinch them together. Okay. Like this. And then we're going to take both of these wires through one of our tiny little silver spacer beads. So you shouldn't have too much problem getting both wires through. Okay. And then push it down. You may need the help of your pliers here because we want a nice snug fit. So pinch the wire together if your bead isn't fitting quite right. Pinch it together and then push that down to the bottom. Okay. Then we're going to thread on our smaller um, amber drop bead. Rounded side first and then separate those two wires protruding from the top, okay? And then on each of those wires, I'm gonna add on a little spacer bead. So I just put one on each side, one and two, okay? And then we're gonna attach that into, into there just by wrapping those wires around those connection points. So hold it in place, Take the wire around it is easier to work with longer lengths of wire but of course when we're working with sterling silver you want to minimize your waste so we tend to um, be a bit more frugal with it don't we so just get those into place to start with and then if you want to use your pliers to help take those wires and wrap wrap around so if you just start one loop on each side or one wrap on each side you'll find that it, at least it will be stable for you to then do the rest with your with your fingers okay so a little wrap on each side okay push push the loops together and i would say two or three wraps around will be enough of course if you wanted to create movement with this dangle you could um, make the component separately and then attach it with a jump ring and then you'd have a bit of movement in there as well but this one is quite just one sort of solid, solid piece. Okay, so I've got three wraps that side, and I'm going to do the same this side. And then again, you can neaten those wraps off by pinching them with your pliers. Then sort of neaten them all up. Okay. 
and then once you're once you're happy trim off the excess wire and again use your pliers just to pinch those ends in so that they're not loose or sticking out or you know making you vulnerable to scratches and skags on clothes we don't want that okay so there's the main body of your pendant that you can attach in to your necklace I added a little bail I can show you quickly how to do that so the bail area here just so that I had a central hanging point is just a sort of horseshoe shape of wire and I've added two um, of the spacer beads on so you'll only want about let's say about um, two centimeters of wire again not very much at all and on one side I'm just going to take my brown nose pliers uh, very tip of the pliers make a very small loop okay very small just a little loop like that and then I'm going to thread on two of my spacer beads so my sterling silver spacer beads onto there and then at the other end I'm going to make another loop now try and make them in the same direction so um, my loop is just here so I'm going to try and make the loop sort of facing the same way so tip of the pliers turn the loop like that okay so we've got this little component here and then I'm going to go to the center I'm going to hold with my rhino's pliers make sure one of the beads is one side and one is the other go to the center of that that little um, piece of wire there and then I'm going to fold down either side so just push down either side so you get this little U shape with a space of bead each side and then I'm going to attach that into here so we may need to widen it a little bit we might need to adjust the shape slightly and then we're going to open these up now usually with a jump ring we say to open it side to side but with this one I'm just going to prise it back open um, so that we can hook it on um, in place and then we can close it back up so make sure you go in hooking it in from the front so hook your pendant in with the top of those u-shaped u-shapes where your channel setting is hook it in and then i'm going to instead of trying to close it with my right nose i'm then going to push push those little loops closed with my flat nose pliers so just gently squeeze so that they fold back around so just hold hold on to it and gently squeeze those wires into position and there we've got our little pendant with a bail ready to pop onto a chain or a rosary link and um, chain of your choice and that's it i hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and look forward to seeing your makes